going? How's it going, Jody? Wow, I like your setup. Everything is going well over here. <laughs> Thank you. I like your setup. Is that a piano behind you? That is, yeah. Oh, That's wow. Very my, nice. <laughs> my new addition. <laughs> oh, really? It's new? Well, it's old. It's actually my grandmother's. Wow. So I've had it my entire life, but uh, it was just given to me. That's amazing. Your grandmother obviously played piano. Her husband was an orchestra, like an orchestra musician. He played wow. violin. Yeah. And he was in like symph symphonies. So he got it to have that in the house. And I ended up learning how to play anyway. That's really cool. So you grew up around the piano then, obviously. Yeah. At my grandparents' house, they had this one. And then my mom actually had a, has still a baby grand Steinway which is wow amazing. that is so cool and where, whereabouts did you grow up um i grew up in north jersey where are you from san diego california Ooh, wow yeah we're like on the opposite ends of the the, the world or not the world the united states here yeah <laughs> i just talked to somebody in scotland so i'm like so <laughs> time. that is very cool there's a dj in scotland that um i just started talking to because we might do some work together Rad. That's awesome. That's really yeah. Cool. Do you play keys also? No, my, my dad and sister do. I just okay. wish I did. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll play guitar when, and then everybody could play that and it didn't do me any good. So it, it, yeah, I wish I did. That's like one of my biggest regrets is not playing piano. I've tried, I have two kids and I'm trying to get them into piano. And so one of them, the yeah. older one that's been in lessons and stuff. So it's cool. So I'm kind of trying to pick up what he's doing. <laughs> How old is the oldest one? 12. Oh, wow. This is like grown. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And then my younger one's four and he's got a drum kit. So we're, we're trying. Okay. <laughs> we yeah. actually just went to an arcade. I don't know if you have them out in San Diego. It's called Round One. Have you been? Mm -mm. It's like an upscale Dave and Buster's. It is the most fun place ever. And we really? were wearing masks and distancing, um, yeah. sanitizing our hands, but they had a, like a drum kit, the same way that there's guitar hero. It was a drum oh, hero. Wow. Yeah. Needless to say, I cannot play drums. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. We got him in a, like an electric kit. So it's not like yeah. obnoxiously loud, uh, and he's digging it. So we, I just need to get him lessons essentially. So yeah. That's, that's next on the, on the list. Piano and drums <laughs> and he has a little mini piano too my four-year-old so that used to be oh that's awesome so yeah so we'll see how that goes um but yeah so you, you started said, me on. Yeah, i know right of all the interviews i do they're always like yeah i started playing piano too when, when did you start playing piano when i was three. Oh, there you go <laughs> tell me about that yeah um piano was never like until I was about maybe in middle school, it wasn't something that I adored. I always loved singing. Mm -hmm. So I was in daycare and I had to be like three years old. And I was always singing in the bathroom whenever <laughs> I would go, you know. And one day the woman, my teacher was just like to my mom, Julie, your daughter loves singing. So my mom like really took it seriously, put me in lessons, uh, piano lessons as well. And I had the same teacher from when I was three until I stopped taking lessons, which was probably up until my senior year of high school. And we were, at that point, we wow. were just doing it for fun. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you're probably a pro <laughs> from three yeah, to cool. what, 18? <laughs> I am by no means an excellent piano player. I learned how to play piano to like accompany myself so I can play and sing but you're not going to see me sit at the piano and play something classical. That just won't happen. Okay. Okay. So, but you give me a pop song and Hey, I'll do it. <laughs> there you go. Well, okay. So you grew up at uh, three, you started learning piano. Um, and then from there, when, when did the songwriting and like kind of covering songs or singing songs start? So I did my first performance on stage when I was three. Wow. And, um, I sang Mr. Oh, Mr. Sun. <laughs> Did you play piano and sing at the same time? No. That oh, was I was insane. like, whoa. That'd be like viral action right yeah, there. Yeah, before YouTube was a thing. Oh my gosh. Um, but I guess I wrote my first song in 
elementary school in like fourth grade or fifth grade. I still remember it. And it is a club banger. <laughs> <laughs> My parents should have known at that point in time when I wrote that song that they were going to have some troubling years ahead of them. Sure. <laughs> Did oh. you play it for anybody? What'd you say? Did you play it for anybody? I sang it at the school talent show. You did. Yeah, How I was, did. What was the reaction? I wish I could remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, but every once in a while it gets stuck in my head. That's cool. And from there, like, did you just keep writing songs and did you ever join a band or was it always kind of? Yeah. Weird? So I went, I'm trying to think of the order. I definitely in middle school, that's when I was really, I classified myself as a songwriter. I went to sleepaway camp, which was a performing arts camp called French Woods Festival. Um, it's up in upstate New York. So they basically breed artists, uh, actors, actresses, uh, photographers. I went every summer. Maroon 5 actually went there. That's where they met. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, and actually the craziest thing, I haven't kept in contact with him, but Paul Simon's son, his name is Adrian. I was friends with him every summer. He'd be at the wow. camp and we'd be in rock band together and whatever. I haven't talked to him since I was like 12 or 13. That's crazy though. Did he, yeah. did Paul Simon like show up to pick him up at camp? He did. <laughs> That's he awesome. did. He showed up to pick him up. And I'm so sorry, Paul Simon, if you're, if you ever watch this, he was not nice to me. Really? <laughs> so, Just yeah, cold? I went to shake his hand and he said no. Really? Maybe he's yeah. like, maybe, yeah, maybe he just kind of foreseed what was going to happen in the future. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was germs. like, COVID-19. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, you wait. But that's crazy. So you went, you obviously went to this rock band camp. And from there, did you play with other people when you got back from camp, like at your high school or anything? So in high school, all every year I would be in these with my piano teacher, I would be in these concerts. He'd do them twice a year. Mm -hmm. So I had experience playing with the professional band since I was a little girl. Okay. And then the weirdest transition was actually playing my own music with a band. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I was in college, I went to NYU. Wow. Uh, for, yeah. for songwriting? Yeah, I went to the Clive Davis Institute. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, so that was, uh, I thought, that was a great experience. And I was in a band with um, my brother. He's, I don't know how many years older than he, he's like 31, I'm 27. So he was my bass player. He's in, a genius. Like he can pick up an instrument and just know how to play things where I have to oh. sit, the, you know, he's just one of those. One of those people, yeah, I've, I've met him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then his buddy, this guy, Dan Birdman, he is a drummer and I think he still plays for an artist. I don't know who he plays for now, but um, so the three of us did a little trio and we played all over Manhattan at like pianos and the bitter end. And I'm trying to think of other places. We definitely wow. played a bunch of gigs. And then I realized I like playing by myself. I'm more of like a Sarah Bareilles person, but by myself or Regina Spector type. Sure. So it's, I don't really need the- The band. band. Right. Well, you, you said your brother was in the band with you. Did he also attend uh, NYU or is he no, just- he, No, he went to school for economics. Oh, wow. Okay. So just, he was just talented and didn't, wasn't his passion. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, tell me about getting into the, into NYU. There must've been some sort of auditioning process or mm -hmm. how was that? Uh, nerve wracking. <laughs> I can't imagine. Um, so I had gone to actually the Clive Davis Institute did a summer program mm -hmm. that you could go come and stay and for the entire summer and sleep there and attend classes. So I did that in high school, maybe when I was a sophomore or a junior. Mm -hmm. And then my mom was convinced you're gonna get into the program. I knew from when I was like a toddler that NYU was my school. Really? I had picked it out. It was like my whole life, I like I was able to do well in school because I wanted to go to NYU. It was just like my you dream. Were, 
were you one of those kids that had like the NYU pennant on your wall when you were like in middle school? You know how the kids, um, you'll see like the I kids would, that like, <laughs> like Penn you know, State or something. I would like. definitely <laughs> wear like NYU gear. Like, my, so I was actually born in Brooklyn and my parents have been divorced since I was like before I could talk. Mm-hmm. But my dad used to take me into Manhattan all the time. And my mom like very strongly identifies as a New Yorker, even okay. though she lives in Jersey, like she'll forever be a New Yorker. And I kind of <laughs> feel the same way, even though okay. right now I live in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I was like, if you've ever heard of um, Magnolia Bakery, does that sound? No, to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I haven't been to New York City. And oh I'm, my gosh. I know, right? Isn't that bizarre? I've never been. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be a new go, thing for me. Man. I know we had this whole plan to go and um, last summer and obviously that wasn't going to happen. So we yeah. had a chance at the plane tickets and all that fun stuff. So sooner than later, I'll be out there. Yeah. New York's in I mean, you have to like that type of hustle. Sure. I mean, I lived in San Francisco, so I'm assuming it's probably pretty similar. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's just way quicker. I went to San Fran like when I was 22 or something. Okay. Yeah. I preferred New York. Sorry. <laughs> I've never been. <laughs> Don't offend. It's not going to offend me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, but NYU, oh. how did you get into the program? Oh, yeah. So, um, they had this crazy audition process. It's even crazier now, Mm -hmm. but not only did you have to audition, but you had to write, like, I felt like I wrote eight essays. And I remember being so anxious about it. And actually there was a girl in my high school that was also an artist. She didn't write her own music, but she released music on YouTube and had a very loyal following. Mm-hmm. And like her videos surpassed a million views by the time we were seniors. Wow. So I was like, they only accept 30 applicants a year. And this girl, I don't want to say her name, but I was like, even if I went to their high school program, she already has a name and I don't like they're looking for these superstars. You know, I graduated with Maggie Rogers and Fletcher and they're two huge names and they were my classmates. Wow. You know? And Emily Warren was a great above me. She writes for Dua Lipa now. <laughs> wow. like, it was just a breeding ground for these super successful artists. And so I was super nervous. I submitted everything. I had um, the interview and they asked me to sing on spot. Like I thought they were just trying to gauge my personality. And they're like, so you're a singer, right? My mom actually somehow filmed the interview. Like, <laughs> yeah i am a singer they're like okay sing it's like i was not prepared for this so i sang and they were like okay we really like you what did you sing do you remember yeah i sang at last okay and just on the spot they're like all right and go yeah yeah actually this man his name is bob power he's a very uh famous audio engineer he Mm -hmm. was like you got some some pipes there girl (laughs) that's cool that must have been a pretty validating comment yeah i didn't find out then Uh that i was accepted i when i got the acceptance letter um i didn't apply to other schools in my mind it was like if i don't get nyu i'm not going to college and you can't make me go anywhere because this is my dream school like i was Mm -hmm. very uh stubborn you know (laughs) but i got the letter i was actually sitting at the piano like twinkling on it one day after school and I got the email on my phone, no idea what type of phone I had. It definitely wasn't an iPhone, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the Nokia opened, with the snake game on it? Probably, <laughs> flip phone. Uh, maybe maybe it was a Blackberry, I have no idea. Wow. I don't know. So I opened the letter that came into my email and immediately started crying and um, I have an older sister, so she drove home and she happened to drive home right when I started crying. So I ran outside and like jumped on her car. She's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? (laughs) Oh, that's cool though. She probably was like, did something happen? (laughs) She thought somebody died. Right. (laughs) Oh my. Well, so you get in, that's huge. Yeah. 
And and from there, what 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 happened for you out or in within school? Did you did you get a deal with anybody? Like what 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 happened? Uh, so I had a couple difficult years, like developmentally as a young woman. Just mentally, I wasn't in the best place like, to make friends, to have like anything. My music was in a different place, like. I, I think I've grown up quite a bit. I'm a, I actually teach high school now. So I'm a high school music teacher. Wow, and that, that's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I am very grateful for this job because it helped me grow up mm -hmm. a lot. You know, I had some problems with my family and I just was kind of like this little ball of like, um, like aggression, but I like hated the world. Sure. So... Uh as some, as most do, like in their <laughs> teen to early twenties. <laughs> yeah. So we asked like what I did when I was there, I did work on a couple of records. Um, two of my professors actually noticed that I was like mentally going through things mm -hmm. and on their own offered to like essentially be my therapist. They call it mentors, but I saw this guy, I, I don't know if I should call him out, but I saw one of the professors, he's very established and he would meet me every Tuesday and we would just sit and talk mm -hmm. and it was super helpful. And then one of my performance professors, one day after class was like, you need to come to my house and pet my cat and have some tea. I'll even give you crackers. I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And then um, had some super weird lucky break through bumble uh met, matched with a guy that was a producer mm -hmm. and um i ended up just like for fun sending him a demo of a song that i wrote and he was like oh yo i'm gonna use this and it ended up going out on a Schwazy record who i think is from california he did baby can I be my corona yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so they used my song on on one of his records so then it like made me feel oh my god finally happening right well that's huge <laughs> yeah and what was, like, that, what I was that song called do you remember i mean obviously you remember what was the song called it's called own damn party okay yeah i was really upset because haha i was upset all of my college years um mm -hmm. my i lived in a in an apartment with a bunch of girls in a sorority mm -hmm. and it was like i want to say eight of us or six of us or something. Wow. And I was the only artist and definitely not in their social circle. So they had a party one night and they didn't invite me. And I was in my room and I was like, drinks on me on my own damn party. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. So from there, you, you got a cut on a record, which is massive, right? Yeah. Got a cut on a record. And then I developed some confidence and um, started work. I had a mentor that oversaw the first couple songs I put out. And he was really like fundamental in helping me like really believe in my dream. Mm -hmm. Cause he was like, you don't need a producer. You're a female producer. Hire the musicians. You don't, you don't need to produce on Logic. You can have real musicians play. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you could do it that way. And then you could be a female producer that writes your music and is in control of everything. You don't need to give anyone a percentage of anything. And I did it that way. And those songs came out great. One of them won a songwriting competition. Wow. Yeah. What, so what song is it, that? Are they up online right now still? Yeah, that one's called What You Desire. Okay. Now I listen back to the recording and there's so much I would change about it now, but. <laughs> sure. You know. Well, with you, you entered the song into a songwriting competition? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, I, I just entered it at the time it was called Indaba music. So they used to do like remix competitions and songwriting competitions all the time. Then they got swallowed by a company called splice. Mm -hmm. Now splice offers loops to producers and musicians to, you know, um, so when I won that competition, I had to upload all of the stems of the song, like the bass, the guitars, my vocals, and then it turned into a remix competition internationally. And 
500 different DJs all over the world submitted remixes of the song. And Whoa. I got to pick the winner. It was really cool. That's awesome. So you got to hear like 500 different versions of your song. Yeah. Actually, the funniest thing is if you were to go on to Sound, SoundCloud right now and type in Jody Valentine, you would see like 50 different remixes of what you desire. I've never <laughs> asked any of them to take it down because it's to me, it's just like, I can't delete this part of my past. You know, right. it's like, it's cute. That's cool. That's, you know? that's really cool. Yeah. So from that song, you, I mean, you had another break there. What, what was the next thing that you put out? Um, so that song came out and then I got super lucky, a, another lucky break. I, I wrote a song in a Brooklyn apartment and um, the person I worked on the song with ended up moving to like China and our relationship kind of just like fell apart. But I had all the stems of the vocals and I just sent it to my friend who's a DJ and was like, do you want this? Like it's sitting here doing nothing. And all of a sudden, like the next day, he sends me back a fully produced version, which is this song called Open Ocean. Mm -hmm. And it got signed to a label out in Switzerland and now has like 600,000 streams. All I because I just said the same thing that I did with Swayze. Like, just, do you want this? Can you use this? <laughs> Wow. And that's how, because I was looking at that one on Spotify. That's huge. Yeah. Six, oh, 600, over 600,000 plays. Yeah. That yeah. Is it's really crazy. Cool. The little, I mean, reaching out to be the thing that I'm finding now. So I've released a bunch of music by myself mm -hmm. this past summer and it's mm -hmm. done like for me relatively well. Yeah. And I mean, the most recent single has like oh, yeah, over 60,000 plays. It's just massive. Is it? <laughs> I mean, 60,000 people have heard your song. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess I have very. Uh, it's hard to put I, in perspective. Yeah, like because but you're comparing yourself to people that have millions upon millions of streams. Yeah. But what does that mean? Yeah. You know, I, if 60,000, that's a imagine playing to 60,000 people. That'd be a huge. Yeah, that'd be that's that'd be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That'd be amazing. Like a, yeah, like a football stadium. So. Yeah, I mean, that's something to shy at. But so you, yeah, so you started. You released quite a few songs this year, or yeah. last year, I should say. Yeah, I finally actually got to a place where I could afford to. I don't want to say like take some risks, but um, I could invest more in my music. Mm -hmm. And I was working with a lot of people for the last two years and us doing like mutually free work and I, it never came out the way I wanted okay and then I realized you know what I'm this was me like I'm gonna be turning 27 I need to just pay someone and so now I have a really close friend um and we work a lot actually so I pay him but to produce my music we also write music together and I've written a number of songs with him for his project that's going to be coming out he um is gonna be releasing like an indie folk project. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of exciting to write on other people's projects. You know, okay. I never I never viewed myself as someone that wrote for other artists, but it's been really uh, pleasant. We, I had another song come out with another artist this year. Uh, her name is Aubrey Toon. And I was really happy with that recording. It's just kind of cool to see someone else sing a song that you're a part of, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Do you write yeah. music? I do not. No, yeah. I just enjoy listening to it. I'm I've I've been in radio for 15 years. I'm, I've always been on the the other side of the coin, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to play in bands and stuff as a kid, but I, yeah, well, I knew I knew that wasn't going to happen for me. And this is my way in to the industry mm -hmm. was going do, doing radio, and then obviously now I started the podcast. So this is what I enjoy doing. I love learning about other people's stories and their journey and yeah. And, I'm just huge into like, you know, documentaries and, and I, it fascinates me, people's lives and how they get to, you know, doing what they're doing. It's just something I've always been interested in. Do you find that you can sense like star quality when you talk to artists? Um, I don't know. Yeah, a little bit, I guess. I, I, I was very good at choo like on the other side of things, like listening to songs right away and figure and telling if it was going to be a hit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of like what I could hear and go, oh, I think that'll be a hit. And then 
sometimes it was and sometimes it wasn't right but Mm -hmm. I don't know that was that was my kind of journey uh with that I always enjoyed like hearing something first and going like does do I think this song could do something but at that point there most of the time the it was like a song an artist was already signed to a label or because it was like to the point of like radio point I wasn't like A&R I was like is this record gonna go on the air in San Francisco? Is this wow. record gonna go on the air in San Diego? Like those, that was kind of the, the rail, the where I was at when it came to the the music. That's side so of things. cool. It was cool, yeah. But I wish I could play. And if you know what I mean, it'd be much more cool to go out on stage to like fifty thousand people. But hey, it, it, hey, each their I, own. I still get nervous. I did a a live. These live stream gigs are a totally different experience. And I've been doing a whole load of them because places have been hiring me to do them. So I got hired by a congregation in New Jersey to do a live stream from the room. Mm -hmm. And man, I was so anxious just playing to a group of like middle-aged to uh, older people that I've never met before. I can't see their faces. Like I see that there are 30 something people in the the live stream i'm like i don't know any of you oh my gosh <laughs> that's cool though you know 30 people showing up while you're playing i mean that's pretty good it's just like, i'm gonna be going going live right now and i've seen a lot of your videos on on your instagram oh so cool. you, yeah you do quite a bit of them do, do you enjoy that yeah you know some days it's more enjoyable than others i can I have I have like these two sides like two weeks out of the month I'll be super critical and harsh on myself and the other two weeks of the month I'm like I am the greatest ever <laughs> <laughs> that's cool <laughs> so it's hard to like the hormones and everything it is like 2AT those two weeks it's crazy but like even I just uploaded a, a cover of Alicia Keys and I really wanted to put it up on Monday for Martin Luther King Day Mm-hmm. And I just was so in my head about it. I was like, my voice, she, her voice is so incredible. Why would I even try to do what she's doing? And then, you know, I just got like way too, uh, like in, in here. And yeah. then the next day I was like, no, Jody, you are going to put on a cute outfit. You're going to do it 50 times if you need to, and you are going to upload it. And from there, you just let it be what it is. That's awesome. So you got the, you did it, right? Yeah, well, I'm uh, currently pursuing a new um, opportunity. So I'm trying to build my profile on social media, on Instagram, Mm -hmm. so that when somebody goes to look at my page, and it's a very specific person for a very specific opportunity, I want them to look at my page and be like, she is very clearly a singer. She is dedicated to her craft. She posts. Mm-hmm. videos of her singing not just like selfies or pictures hiking or you know I want to <laughs> do I just well, want my dinner. page to be very clearly she is a singer <laughs> mm-hmm. and she practices what she preaches you know I'm like yeah and you can tell that from your Instagram I mean there's just video after video after video it's awesome well I'm trying to thank you I'm just trying to you know I, I say I'm a singer I'm an artist my page was mostly just like really cute pictures out and about. So I'm like, okay, people come to my page. What differentiates me from all the other artists? Cause we, mm-hmm. all these artists are posting like cute pictures of them out and about. It's mm-hmm. like, I should just sing. Like, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. I should just sing. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's awesome. Well, I hope that person goes to your page and, and, and finds exactly what you're, you're trying to put out there. Um, and tell me, so you've released, I think four songs last year, right? Looks yeah. like, on, yeah. yeah. So what were those songs that you had already written and recorded post COVID or before COVID started? Like, tell me about where you were when that all happened and how that affected your music. So started recording December of 2019. Okay. That was before. hindsight. Hindsight was 2019. Oh, December. wow. The most recent one. The most recent one. And then I did a couple sessions there. This was all in New York. Um, I forget where in New York. It wasn't Manhattan. 
it, it wasn't Long Island either. I, maybe it was Long Island. I don't know. My friend had a home studio. They just moved to LA. Okay. So we recorded the vocals and did a lot of the production before COVID started. Okay. And then once COVID hit, I was like, my dream is <laughs> like, I can't see, I can't go to the studio. I can't work on this stuff. And then um, we just got it done. We really just got it done. And even one of the songs, Blue Eyes, mm -hmm. we had produced it a completely different way. And uh, right as we were in the final mixing stages, I was like, no, it's not right. We can't do it. And he was like, Jody, come on. I'm like, I'll pay you to redo it. Just we're going to redo it because I'm not putting out something I don't love. Sure. And then yeah. did you, you guys redid it, obviously. We redid the whole thing in like a day and a half. And then wow. I was very happy and then set up the release and did that. And I've actually been working with, I have a song coming out in May. Mm -hmm. And this one's signed to a label. It's very different than what anything I have out. It's with a, a really cool, like avant-garde type of artist. And um, I guess they're considered a DJ, but the, the music to me is really interesting. So that'll come out with this small label called Ophelia. And that was just done from here, from my, I have a little closet recording booth and I just go in there. And uh, that song was crazy because I had written a song to the instrumental he sent me. Mm -hmm. And when I got into the booth, I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> and I just was like, what would sound better? And within like the, within a span of a minute, completely changed everything. And in my mind, like not reading from lyrics or anything, just recorded what was on my mind. And he was like, yeah, I love it. I'll use it. Wow. And then I got signed to Ophelia. So I was just like, wow, why did I even sit there trying to write it? And it's, you know. Sure second guessing yourself yeah yeah um well so okay so you just hindsight was the most recent release mm -hmm. of yours are is that going to be part of a, an ep or a full record or do you have any singles coming out aside from the one you're just talking about yeah so it was going to be part of an ep and i still have to think and decide i wrote a song back with there's one more song that's part of this group of songs that we're going to all come out together uh -huh. the last man the last man, the last song that was going to come out is called The Man I Love. Okay. And um, the song, again, it had reached the final mixing stage and I just was like, it's not right. And it doesn't service the song the way I want it to. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite particular about that stuff. When it's, when it's my music, directly mine, you know, just my name. When mm -hmm. other people's names are on it, like I have a record that I've been working on with another uh, DJ. His name is Vance, he's really cool. And I'm less particular about the instrumentation because it's ours and not mine. Oh, interesting. You know? Yeah. So when you write a song, do you know if it's something you're gonna try to pitch to somebody else or you're gonna keep it for yourself? I never know. Oh, it just kind of happens either way? Yeah. Uh, I have one song out of probably a thousand songs that I've written that I feel is a hundred percent mine that I will definitely record by myself. Mm -hmm. But that's like one out of a thousand. I'm not like territorial over anything I write. And, you know, I just, I would just like to give the song the best life it could possibly have. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But we can expect a new song. Obviously, you said coming out in next month or May. Yeah, so we have one coming out in May that's 100% like that's set. And then a really weird like slew of songs that not weird songs, but I have a cover of Closing Time by Semisonic. Oh, rad. Okay. So that's with a cool DJ duo that are actually in PA. They're called Little Legends. So we've been pitching it to labels right now. And hoping that someone bites because mm -hmm. it's like a deep house uh, type of track. I, I really like it. So that is definitely gonna come out in 2021. And um, I have another song with a, a writer, a songwriter. She wrote the song and then I came in and um, edited the song and changed some words. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna release that too, probably in June or July, I'd imagine. 
And then I have one more song planned that would just be a Jody Valentine release that I did with um, my friend Sam Bierman. He is a writer producer. So awesome. I, very, I very rarely write songs by myself anymore. And it's kind of weird. I used to only write by myself and like really swear by it. Uh-huh. And um, I feel like growing up and having way less time, it actually is nice. Like just, especially during the pandemic, it's really nice to just do things with people, whether it's through Zoom or, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, kind of have some sort of uh, normalcy to this weirdness <laughs> that's yeah. going on. Yeah, for sure. Well, I can't wait to, to hear those new re- uh, records when they come out. Thanks. And I, yeah, and I appreciate you talking with me today, Jody. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have, no problem. I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. I'm sure I do. <laughs> uh, do I have advice for aspiring artists? Um, well, something I've learned is that not everyone's going to be your fan, and that's okay. You know, you're going to hear a ton of no's, but then you'll get a yes, and that yes will kind of make up for all the no's. And maybe that I don't know if this is just my journey or whatnot, but it's not always like this glorious little ride. There are lots of lows and, but it's like they, it's kind of like a wave. So you have to be willing to ride the wave because it comes with ups and downs. I think that's part of being an artist anyway, but you gotta just like persevere through it and you know, just be willing to see, like be patient and see the result and be there when the result is like read, you know? Cause there were things that I, that I got frustrated with maybe through submitting. I know there's this uh, website called Submit Hub. Yeah. Which you can, yeah. So I remember submitting to 50 places and they all said no and critiqued the song. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I felt crushed. Like I just put so much time and effort into it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to send it to another 50 places. And from there, I got almost like 15 yeses. Wow. And then I submitted it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep submitting the song. And then it ended up making it onto the charts of Submit Hub for Folk. Wow. And the first 50 responses were no. Which, you know, and then all of a sudden, like the next day, um, I started at number 10 on the charts. And then I went up to number three all because I just persevered Mm -hmm. and challenged, you know, even there was a woman or a young, a young woman who runs a blog out in the United Kingdom and she declined my song blue eyes from writing it up. I emailed her Mm -hmm. and for some reason I was feeling sassy that day. And I was like, you know what? You seem like someone that would give the song another shot. So I would recommend listening to it again. And she listened to it again. She said, okay, I'll write it up. Wow, that's yeah. huge. That's really cool. Yeah, so yeah, you could definitely have to advocate for yourself and no doesn't always mean no. Bring me the best word.